Now, if we go back a few days, we remember the shooting that took place that killed, I think it was three police officers and about seven more. It was a 29-year-old ex-Marine by the name Gavin Long. And this, of course, occurs right after a previous uh, killing of police, uh, five of them, and now three more. So that's two deadly shootings against police in a very short amount of time. Now, uh, according to uh, many sources, he went to the University of Alabama for a short time. Uh, he served seven months in Iraq, and then he got a divorce in 2011. And then while he was in Iraq, he managed uh, the rank of Sergeant E5. Now, what's really interesting about this is the fact that he was actually a YouTuber. He went by the name uh, Cosmos Sitterpenra. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And some of his videos are actually still there. And it's very interesting to see him make that leap from some guy talking on the internet to a guy who killed a bunch of cops IRL. Now, there's a lot of other things. During his time on YouTube, he described himself as a freedom strategist, mental game coach, nutritionist, author, and spiritual advisor. I don't know where he found the time to shoot any cops because that would keep me pretty full on my schedule. It should be also noted that a lot of reporting that he is a former Christian, a former Nation of Islam member. Uh, police say that he carried a membership to a, a black sovereign citizen group. Uh, these are people who feel that their interpretation of the law is obviously a litigants, uh, feel that the law doesn't apply to them. They have a very strange understanding of how the, the Constitution works, etc. Now, here's also something very interesting. He was a regular contributor to a conspiracy website uh, where he talked about the evils of gang stalking and as well as remote brain experimentation, remote neural monitoring of an entire human body, a patented voice to human skull, the forceful 24 seven projected noise into a citizen's head. Now this is some, this is some really far out there stuff. I don't think it necessarily means he's crazy. I just think he wasn't, he's not very good at critical thought. Now, he, here's another thing. Uh, according to some of the stuff that he's published, he was also a, a raging misogynist. The man is the leader. He has to take responsibility for keeping his woman in check at all times. Don't get a woman if you can't keep her in check. Alpha males don't leave a bitch unchecked. Now, this paints uh, a picture of the kind of man that he was. However, I would think that it's important not to let this image mar what he really did or let this uh, detract from what he did. He killed these police officers in an act against the the police killings of black men. Uh, we, we may question his, his character on other issues all we wish, but this doesn't detract from the very serious social problem that's going on in the United States with police killings. Now with the the highest ranking officer related to the death of Freddie Gray having been found absolutely not guilty, which is not surprising in my mind. And a, lo a, a lot of radicals warned that nothing was going to happen as a result of, of the prosecution, that they were going to walk. And that's exactly what happened. Now, after the shooting, the head of Cleveland's largest police union called the Ohio Governor John Kucinich to temporarily restrict the state's open carry laws and the Second Amendment during this week's Repub uh, National Republican Convention. We are sending a letter to Governor Kucinich requesting assistance from him. He could very easily do some kind of executive order or something. I don't care if it's constitutional or not at this point. They can fight about it after the RNC or they can lift it after the RNC, but I want him to absolutely outlaw open carry in uh, Cuyahoga County until this RNC is over. Well, to hear a police representative say that they don't care about the Constitution, frankly, shouldn't really be surprising to anyone. But it does show how the police all of a sudden find a support for gun control and even eliminating parts of the Constitution when it threatens them. Of course, when they kill other people, 
you know, they've got all kinds of excuses of you shouldn't have resisted when you were lying down with your hands behind your back. And you just... Uh, 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 a whole general of it's somebody else's fault. But, but when one of them, when they start getting killed, now they're calling for gun control. And that really should not be surprising because that speaks very much to the situation that's going on. Because as more armed black protesters show up, right-wingers are now tending towards the restriction of guns, even though it's one of the most sacred freedoms to them. But to speak to the actual shooting itself, a lot some people are saying that this is now the start of a movement where they're killing cops. And I disagree with that. I think what we have is two isolated cases that are very definitely related uh, over the same issue and uh, one may have actually been influenced by the other we don't know because we don't have the whole story yet but I would say this could be the beginnings of a trend and I would not be surprised if this is something that continues to happen in the future if not something that accelerates to higher levels because you can really only suppress people for so long until they start lashing back. You can only kill the black population long enough before they start taking out a kind of revenge. I would, however, like to warn fellow Marxists that this is not a symptom of a building revolutionary potential because a lot of this is race-related. These people are not socially conscious in terms of class and wanting to abolish it. For example, we saw the, you know, the last one uh, Gavin Long is a conspiracy theorist and a raging misogynist at the same time. That this doesn't denote a rising revolutionary potential. It does indicate a rising unrest in the country, but I think it would be way too early to try to use this as a sign for a possible class-based revolution across racial lines. Because this situation is very much racial at its, at its core. And that complicates things, you know, a lot more than what would simply be a possible revolutionary potential. But we'll have to see how this whole situation plays out, and we're going to have to wait until more information comes in. Thank you for watching. Why don't you go ahead, rate, comment, subscribe, and share on various social media. And if you want, you can head over to my Patreon page to show your support. Or you can head over to the MRN Bookstore and check out some of the latest books available.